and good to have you with us on the 9 p.m. edition of the Urban Debate. Viewers, ever since the lockdown began, there has been much conversation, especially within the urban societies, the apartment complexes. That's what I mean when I say societies. About the rules and regulations, who can go in and who can come uh, go out, who should be allowed, who shouldn't be allowed. There's been much debate and controversy. Now it has come to the point as we begin to see lifting of rules, as we begin to see relaxation in our lockdown, some of the RWA associations, the resident welfare associations, the, the associations who usually make rules for individual apartment complexes and societies, some of them are actually coming out with their own set of rules. And some of these rules are actually quite bizarre. So tonight I thought, let's talk about this as as many of our viewers who live in these urban cities and in these rw associations let's talk about some of these rules that are being created and if they are right not just about the fact if they are legal but if they're even sensible can there be other ways are our rwas turning into dictators making their own rules and making their own laws over and above what the government and medical experts deem to be fit. And I will, over the next one hour, give you some instances to drive home this point. In fact, let me give you some examples to begin with. Some of the bizarre ones that we actually found. For example, in a society in Gurugram, earlier known as Gurgaon, there is a rule that the RW has made that you can go for a walk, but you can only walk in clockwise direction inside the complex. Now, mind you, this isn't just a rule about traffic movement. This is a rule for people to go on their morning and evening walks, or in general, if they have to walk, go out and come back. Only walk in clockwise direction. If you are going to walk in anti-clockwise direction, there will be a fine of 500 rupees. That's the rule. In another society in Kurugram, they have now decided that the infection threat is actually from the maids and their domestic help and their cleaners. It's not from the people who've actually been traveling abroad. It's not from the people who may be living in their own society. It's not them, them, those people themselves who step out to buy vegetables, who step out to go buy their groceries, who step out to buy their essentials and medicines, but only the domestic help and maids. So they have said, that you must go pick up and escort your house help home to ensure they don't enter the lift or they don't touch the buttons of the lift. That's the level of segregation that a society is actually gone. Pick up and drop the house help from the lobby, escort them, keep an eye on them to see where they are going. In another one from Gurugram. I'm sorry, it seems like we are only referring to this one city. I will give you examples from other cities. But these are the interesting ones that I thought we should begin with. People are supposed to frequently sing patriotic songs from their balconies. An order to this effect, an order to this effect has actually been passed by the RWA, including a list of songs and precise timings that have been given. In many other societies, in Gore City, in Noida, Domestic help is not allowed to use elevators. Domestic help has been forced to use the staircase in Gore City. Ex uh, again in Noida, anyone returning after 24 hours needs to bring in a COVID-free certificate. Now, I don't know what this COVID-free certificate means. But if you just walk up to a hospital or a lab, nobody's just going to test you until you show the symptoms, until you wait for hours together, until you have a contact. But this society says if you are gone for 24 hours, please come back with a COVID-free certificate. In Ghaziabad, in a society in Indrapuram, they said anyone stepping out needs to be fully sanitized in a way before they are allowed to come in. In Hyderabad, they are naming and shaming people who are taking a walk in the compound, just strolling around within the compound, within their own complex. Those people are being named and shamed. I don't know what these people were thinking. You do realize that everybody steps out to buy essentials. Everybody steps out to buy groceries. That's probably more risky than taking a walk in your own complex. But let's name and shame those. Various ones in Ghaziabad, healthcare workers are not allowed. Imagine that. We stand and clap for them. 
we cheer for them and then we don't allow them to come to their own houses and say no please don't enter stay out stay away we need we are more concerned about our own safety not about the service you're providing to the nation these are some examples i'll give you more and i'm sure some of our panelists also have some interesting insights into what's really happening let's say good evening mr bs vora president of rwa federation of east delhi joint front Ramesh Prabhu, Chairman for the Maharashtra Society Welfare Association, K.K. Rai, Senior Advocate with the Supreme Court, H.C. Gupta, President for Federation of RWF Ashok Vihar in Delhi, Dr. Ruby Makija, Secretary of Navjeevan Vihar RWA, and I've also got Sudha Ramalingam, Senior Advocate with the Madras High Court. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Sudha Ramalingam, let's begin with you. What is your own view of some of these rules that RWAs are themselves defining and forcing people to follow? Really, really bizarre. They are definitely not governed by any law. As such, these resident welfare associations have got to be uh, uh, only registered under the Society's Registration Act or the Trust Act. They do not have any power or uh, lawmaking statutory. They are not lawmaking statutory authority. They are there only to regulate and help. To, for the usage of common facilities. They have nothing else more than that. There are uh, provisions under the Indian Penal Code uh, wherein uh, obstructing or preventing a person from proceeding the way he wants to go or in the direction that he wants to go. Wrongful restraint is also a crime under the Indian Penal Code. The uh, Constitution gives us a freedom of movement which is an unrestricted, which cannot be restricted by any you know, resident welfare association. Freedom of movement is a fundamental right. And what is being done now is exclusion and not inclusion. All these resident welfare associations are there for the purpose of an inclusive usage of all the common areas. Nothing more or less than that. I think what is being done is definitely not governed by any law. And it is also things which are definitely illegal. Okay, uh, let me actually go across to Mr. B.S. Vora. Good evening, Mr. Vora. Um, Mr. Vora, there has actually at one point uh, even been confrontation between the RWAs of Delhi and the Delhi government about some of the, these rules that are being designed. Uh, what is your own view? Are some of the RWAs and societies going overboard? No, we have not done anything wrong. We have not given any such order that to stop the maids or plumbers or electricians to come into the society. We have never done that. We have never tried to stop any one of them. But we have just asked the people to uh, take restraint. If you can postpone the service, please do it. If it is necessary, if it is a must, please call them and get your work done. No need to suffer unnecessarily. But just now what I have seen on your channel that uh, some of the RWS may have taken some wrong decisions as you have shown at different locations, different uh, spots. But maybe even they have done that uh, just uh, for the welfare of the members and nothing else. I don't think even they had any wrong intention. But if Anything wrong done by them, by them, it is it's absolutely, we will not support it. Uh, let the maids come, let the plumbers come, let the workers come. But the, so far as Delhi government is concerned, it has not supported us in any way. In the entire lockdown period, none of them came to us, none of them consulted us, none of them offered us even a mask, even a sanitary bottle, or even a thermal scanner. So many maids are moving on the road, so many workers, uh, Redi Wala, Russian shops, grocery shops, milk vendors, paper vendors, everyone is on the road. But I don't think any one of them was checked by anyone. And they never offered us anything to check them or to do any such service for them. But they just want to place order on us. Yeah. RWS can't do that. We have never stopped anyone from coming to the society. But if the people don't want to come, what we can do? We don't take any decision on our own. If, if ours, is the, ours is not an but apartment. Mr. Bora, you are saying... Me. You, you, you are saying that the maids and the cleaners and the newspaper vendors are not being checked. What about the people? It's not as if the society is going to check everybody who goes in and out every single day, twice a day. People are allowed to go out and shop for essentials, yeah, now for everything so else also because we are opening up. So then how will the societies ensure that? Or why are we only having these rules and regulations for our domestic help which is coming in? See, the problem is whenever we are going out, we are trying to take every precaution. But even after that, the situation at present is, is a worsening. 
there's every scope that we are going to catch or we are going to get infected with the virus. The problem is the maids, these are working in the not normal Correct. conditions. They are going house to house. They are doing all sort of lower uh, level works. I'm really sorry for them. But problem is due to us if they are infected. It's the loss to them also. Suppose I am going out, I get infected and the maid is coming in our house. She is also infected. Then she will go to other 10 houses. All of them will be infected. So what's the use of that? We are just trying to take every precaution. We are we are asking government, hmm. please provide us some... So how let's, is let's, having let's, a separate gate the for them? How? No, our, ours is not... But a how is having a separate system. entrance to, for them going to solve the problem? No, nothing. No, there's no difference in that. Uh, it's the, if everyone is coming or going from the same gate, there's no problem. I don't think there's anything. Or if just you say, uh, showed something that they are, they are not allowed to use the lift or they are not allowed to do this or that, that's absolutely wrong. We will not support it. They are also human beings. They are also working for us. They are serving. They are also, in a way, Corona warriors who are coming to your home to serve you. Maybe the doctors, maybe the nurses, maybe the official staff. They all are the mm. Corona warriors. We must salute them. We must salute them. We are, we are standing with them. If anyone tries to stop them, okay. it's absolutely wrong. We'll never support them. But that government so, must, okay. must Let help. me actually Let bring in Dr. Ruby Makija. Um, Dr. Ruby Makija, in so many cases, and, and unfortunately, a large majority of them actually come from North India, the healthcare workers themselves have not been allowed, have been left stranded on the road in the middle of the night, have been cornered and abused by their own society members, RWA members. Are some of these RWAs take, going overboard? Absolutely overboard. I totally, firstly, I would like to condemn all these incidents which in which we have crossed uh, the legal boundary. I would like to say uh, that as an RWA, we have no authority to make our own uh, unilateral rules or conditions. Yes, within the legal framework, if we stay within the legal framework and we have some space to make certain uh, uh, norms or protocols which can keep our residents safe, completely and totally agreeable, we can do that. But nothing which is against the law. If the law has permitted the uh, domestic helps, uh, by all means, they should be permitted. Yes, we can have thermal scanners, we can have record registers, we can check whether they are having any fever, we can check whether they belong to a containment zone or not. Absolutely understandable. But nothing which is against the law. Yes, you're very right that there were incidents where the RWA did make the doctors stay outside, uh, you know, in a corner and uh, in the middle of the night stranded. And we did put our foot down to that also. And uh, we did uh, bring it to the notice of the area district magistrate that this is not acceptable. But absolutely, as far as speaking for my RWA and for the RWA who are uh, known to me, nothing illegal is either supported or done by these RWAs. Okay, I, I, uh, I want to actually also highlight on this point that there are many, many societies today who have uh, said that the domestic help will not be allowed to enter the elevators, that people must escort them in and out. There are still many societies who say that anybody who is coming in needs to present a COVID-free certificate. Now, I don't know what a COVID-free certificate is, um, Dr. Etsy Gupta. Does this mean that somebody, people have to get tested and show that they are negative before they are allowed to enter, whether it's my car cleaner, my maid, whether it's me myself, if I have gone on essential services work and come back after 24 hours, am I to present a COVID test? Because that's not going to be possible for everyone. Dr. Gupta? Okay. All right. I'm just, I'm going to go across to Ms. I'm just going to go across to uh, Mr. Ramesh Prabhu and ask him this question. Mr. Ramesh Prabhu, uh, how are the societies really allowed to come up with such rules? In fact, uh, yeah. in fact this is very unfortunate. Uh, neither the society at no point of time can make this type of rules. They are not, uh, you know, the government department where they can make this type of rules. And getting a COVID certificate, 
what is the guarantee that mm. once you get that certificate uh, on the next mm. day they will not get affected so infected so i think these are all uh, ridiculous rules correct i only would correct. say that yes as a rws though we have about 60000 housing societies in maharashtra uh, member of our association we have been guiding them uh, only uh, the queries that is coming from various corner is that by allowing them uh, are we taking a risk and secondly are we will be held responsible chairman secretaries are ready to you know uh, give the entry provided they are not uh, made accountable and responsible by the government what happened in uh, especially mumbai and other parts of maharashtra the collectors has issued a initial certificate saying that rwa that is a housing society will not allow anybody inside and they will preserve the sanctity they will continue do the lockdown now when it started once again nothing has been said about the maids and other people therefore the housing societies are looking for some clarification hmm. we have been writing number time to the government to give a clarification government is also keeping quiet on it neither the mcjm nor you know municipal corporation nor the government is issuing any certificate to that effect that this type of maid servants are allowed by taking necessary precaution so therefore they are in doldrum rather not knowing what is to be done so therefore we as a apex body have taken a decision we will call a meeting tomorrow and we'll have a standard operating procedure wherein we'll keep a sanitizer we'll keep some thermal uh, you know thermometer and then if required pulsometer for some society as a recommended practice and we will say that the society should permit this maid servants to come in provided that owner is interested if the we cannot pre- pressurize anybody the uh, the maid servants as well as the owner both should be agreeing if they are agreeing i think society should not come in the way that is a view we have been taking it and we will see that from tomorrow it gets implemented also in maharashtra okay i have want to play out a video uh, which has been put out by a concerned citizen from their own society now this is a video that uh, has been put out from uh, a posh residential block in del uh, in noida and it shows a breathless domestic helper climbing the steps because she is not allowed to use the lift because corona virus take a look नहीं तो हम काम वाली हूँ तो ड्राइवर क्या काम वाले नहीं है वो भी तो मेडे है ना है तो वो आते हैं है तो हम लोग फिर क्यों नहीं आने देते हम लोग भी आने दीजिए तो क्या बोल रहे हैं गार्ड बोल रहे मना कर रहे हैं जो नहीं तुम लोग को अलाउ नहीं है लिफ्ट में जाने के लिए जीने से जाओ अब बताए सात फ्लोर तक हम लोग आएंगे तो बताइए पैर में दर्द होते हैं हम कैसे काम करेंगे है तो ड्राइवर है तो उनको लिफ्ट से आने दे रहे हैं हमें जीने से बोल रहे हैं ऐसा थोड़ी होगा I just want to say this viewers and this reflects the classist mindset of our society it's nothing else but being classist it's nothing else but being selfish and self obsessed and not bothering at a human level for anybody else if you are so concerned about getting an infection do your own work you're all any which was locked up inside do your own work and pay your domestic help while they sit at home away from you so that you don't get an infection if you yourself are stepping out for a walk to buy groceries to buy essential supplies for your own work then what makes you believe that you or your neighbor or anybody else who lives in your multi storied building will not infect the elevator but this woman who's working for you will do that this is the problem and mr k k rai how are societies allowed to make their own rules and regulations in some cases bar people from living in their own society how is that possible okay let me take that question across to mr pramod kohli mr pramod kohli is this fair
Well, my apologies. We are having a bit of a trouble with some of our tec uh, technical lines over there. Let me take back this back to Sudha Ramalingam, who is also a legal expert. Ms. Ramalingam, can we actually take action against such societies? Definitely, if only there is going to be curtailment of their fundamental rights, if there is going to be a curtailment on obstructing or preventing a person from moving around freely, and also if there is going to be a wrongful restraint, there could be action taken against the, these people, of course. But having said that, I think everything should not be covered only by law and law for legal actions. There should be a sort of a cooperation, there should be more dialogue between these people. After all, they are all neighbors. They'll have to look at each other and live together also. Taking recourse to law would only actually make the play entire environment very hateful. And uh, there will be more animosity. That's not what is expected of a society. All these societies are there for, it is called resident welfare societies. Then what is this welfare about if you are going to be actually be keeping people away from each other? There seems to be a paranoia which has been, which has set inside people after this pandemic. We don't realize that this is a pandemic which has to be worked out together and ensure that you are more inclusive and see that you are going to be more considerate with each other. And uh, I think, though, of course, you can take recourse to law, you can prefer complaints, you can uh, uh, seek the uh, help of the police also if need be. Uh, but uh, the larger, in the larger interest, I would say dialogues are better. Yes. No, I completely agree with you. Dialogues are better. But what do you do when people actually start acting in such a selfish way? Then it becomes a problem. Let me go across to one of our viewers who's on the phone line. The phone lines are open, viewers. Call in and tell us your view. Do you think some of these RWAs are going overboard, acting like dictators, making their own rules and laws which are against the tenets of our own democracy just because... They can or they think they can. I mean, I don't understand whoever came up with the rule that you must only walk in a clockwise direction. Whatever possibly could be the logic for that rule. But Abhilash is on the phone line and he's calling us from Bengaluru. Good evening, Abhilash. What do you have to say? Hi, hi. Uh, so I have this as a question that are there no rules to govern the rights of the domestic workers and the house helping staff and housekeeping staff? Uh, because as an as a people, we have become heartless that we uh, we impose our own stringent rules at whatever times and at whatever times necessary during the lockdown. These were the guys who helped us, the housekeeping staff of our uh, apartment. But right now, just after lockdown was a bit without notice, they have been thrown out of the uh, apartment. And these were the same people whom we went on the terraces and clapped and mm. you know saluted them for their service and right now there is no dignity in terms of how they have been removed. And uh, there are thermal, there are uh, thermometer checks only happening for the domestic workers and everyone coming inside the apartment, but no checks for the residents of the apartment who keep traveling out and in. But why is this discrepancy happening? And there's some questions that no one is answering. No, this yes. Uh, well, I'll tell you, nobody wants to acknowledge that, but, we, but this is uh, generally just a uh, classist behavior and a mindset that says, oh, they live in crowded areas and that's where now more cases are coming from. So let's just test them. Let's not test the people who are living around us uh, and they're all old, okay. They can, they can go out and come in, but not us, but the others who work for us. Uh, to your earlier query, let me go back to Sudha Ramalingam. Sudha Ramalingam, are there any rules governing what, uh, you know, can be done as far as the entry and exit or, or, or access to domestic help is concerned? As such, there is no law regulating any access to um, um, domestic worker coming inside or going out. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, I can uh, say is that uh, there are basic laws which say that you have a right 
to enter any place. There is also this IPC provision which uh, talks about wrongful restraint and also wrongful confinement. And as far as uh, Tamil Nadu is concerned, we have the rights and responsibilities of Landlords and Tenants Act also, wherein you cannot illegally disconnect any uh, services which are there. But as far as entry of a domestic servant is concerned, definitely there is no law governing it. But nothing is beyond natural justice. So if you feel that there is something which is going against natural justice, against the order of nature, then definitely it is not right and it would not be permitted by law itself. So you can call it also as a liability, as a right, which arises to like a tortious right. So you don't need a specific law governing or helping you to let a servant inside your house. Definitely you have a right to have your servant. You have a right to have anybody inside your house. Your neighbor, you can call in your relatives, you can call in your friends, you can call in your servant also. There can be no law which prevents you from entertaining Correct. anyone in your house. It will, it will include also domestic servants. Correct. Absolutely. So let me actually go across uh, to, to Mr. Uh, uh, Kohli and ask him this question, Mr. Kohli. What are the kind of rules and regulations that you are seeing around you? Because I am I am reading and hearing quite a few bizarre ones by RWS. It's as if RWS have a mind of their own now. No, but it is not like that. It is not like that. RWS is working for the welfare of the society, culture of the people. Now, let me tell you one thing. We have been... Previously, the government said RW has the right to see that what kind of ring they want to have. Okay, we did it very well. We did it for the society. Now they say that notification has come. Okay, you can't stop anybody. We are not stopping anybody. We want, there are senior citizens. We want to help them. We want that they, then everybody should go. Let, but you see, the RW is always having crunch of uh, funds, you know. We can't have sanitizing machines, then sanitizing doors, and so many things, masks, and we are trying to get you know, sponsors for all these things. Now, everybody is allowed. We are not stopping anybody, but people and the workers, they are also reluctant to come to the society. When they come to know there are one or two cases, they stop coming. And people, those who are in real need, the senior citizens, the people, those who are staying alone, they can't do anything, there are no helpers, they are allowing them. The RWs are not enforcing any law of their own. They are here to um, uh, see the welfare of the association, welfare of the people um, in a larger society. I'm not saying you're not allowing them. I'm telling you how you're allowing them. That is that is exactly my point. And by that, yeah, I don't mean specifically yeah, you, Mr. Yeah, Kohli, yeah, or yeah, your yeah, RWA. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm giving you examples. Yeah, in, in, in Sarvodaya Enclave, please let me finish. Let me let me give you examples. Sarvodaya Enclave in Delhi has separate gates for nurses, domestic helps and plumbers. Separate gate because that's somehow going to protect everybody from that. In 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 Noida, in many societies, people people have been told to go and you know pick up their housemate. And, and, and climb up the steps with them or if they are getting in the elevator ensure that they don't touch anything and then get out what is this if this is not classism your own neighbor may not may be touching the elevator and infecting it as well but we only put these rules for certain people and for covid warriors for healthcare professionals for nurses we are telling them to use a back door we are telling them you can't enter in your own home i'll give you one more example and this is across the country this conversation tonight needs to be about introspection of what we are doing as people in our own country. A family of four viewers, including two little children, they were in Gujarat around the time that the lockdown announcement was made in Surat. They immediately drove back to Mumbai, to their own home, to their own home. And they were not allowed to enter because the RWA decided that now that the lockdown has been announced, you cannot enter the society. They were left on the road with nowhere to go, including two children. This is what we are say, doing. People have started naming and shaming those who are out for a walk within the, uh, their own society. What are we doing? Just because we can make these rules, we think we can do whatever we want, throw people out on the road segregate our domestic help, make them climb 10 floors through the stairway, taking the staircase while we take the elevators. 
the risk of infection is the same. COVID is not going to differentiate between you and your house health. Mr. K.K. Rai, are there, is there a way to solve this or do RW has have the freedom to design whatever laws they want? See, RWAs must understand their limitations. Their association of individuals who are staying in a particular society and they are to work for the convenience of the people at the same time, they have no business to take law in their hand. For enforcing law, there must be authority given to the part enforcing agency to enforce it. RWA doesn't have such powers which they are exercising. They can't segregate, they have to respect the constitutional values and the constitutional values that we cherish is right to equality. We have to give due respect to all the citizens, irrespective of the avocations they are practicing and that would include the helps which are working for us, their dignity must be maintained, their dignity may not, should not be compromised and if there is any violation of the government regulations, they have to enforce this through the governmental agencies, not that they should themselves enforce it, because they don't have power to do that. And for any coercive measure, there must be authority of law, which they don't have. At the same time, we must understand that they are also doing a collective job of ensuring that the society functions within limits, the society has all the facilities available under law. So therefore, there must be some kind of sensitivity adopted by the societies towards the employees who are working and towards the residents also. In their over zeal to enforce certain restrictions, they shouldn't take law in their hand. And that has a tendency of making somebody autocrat who has no authority of law at all. And that would bring in lawlessness because there would be equal number of people who would say that no business to do that. So mutual respect of the individuals and the society has to, has to be there. And, and they should work within limits that they must understand. They should they have no business to take law in their hand. And at the same time, the, the constitutional guarantees given to all the citizens, which includes right to dignity, has to be maintained even by the other ways. Okay, let me also, uh, uh, you know, go back to some of our uh, uh, panelists, Dr. Ruby Makija. Um, what do you think should be an ideal way of handling this? People will say, but we have to look out for our own health. We have to look out for our family's health. We are not stepping out. Other people are coming from outside. What about that? What should be the ideal role of an RWA without going overboard? Well, uh, the ideal way of the RWA uh, uh, should be uh, right now, first of all, providing correct and authentic information, clear and uh, clear cut guidelines which have been passed on by the government should directly go to the resident, should seep in well. And the same applies to the RWAs also. If there is a legal boundary which has been defined for us, we should not and we must not cross that legal boundary. Yes. Staying within that boundary, we can advise our residents in their best interest what is right and what is wrong. Yes, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, we uh, advised uh, some of our residents to take in their domestic health uh, move in uh, 24 hours. So 20% of our residents have moved their domestic health to uh, a full-time domestic health. So that way they stay safe. And this is very well within the legal boundary. Also, we ensure that these domestic helps, if people choose not to call them, are paid for the tenure that they're not being called. So these are a few things which I feel. And in any case, uh, you just mentioned this incident of Sagodia enclave. I would like to clarify, I am not aware of any such incident where a Sarvodhya enclave uh, uh, has a separate gate for the maids. I think you must verify. If in case it is true, then again, this is something which we don't support and we should not support. But staying within the legal boundaries, advising our residents uh, what is 
is right, what is law, uh, wrong, we can actually guide them to take and to help them take a better decision in their own uh, 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 interest. Uh, there is a senior citizen who is staying all by himself. Mm. He, he is dependent totally upon a part-time domestic help. Now he is vulnerable too. He is not willing to call the domestic Correct. help. But still, you know, the risk is there. And how does he do the household normal course? He, he can't uh, cook, he can't clean. So there the role of RWA comes in. We help and support these residents, provide them meals thrice a day, uh, send a volunteer to clean the rooms. Uh, the, these volunteers who have been cleaning are the ones who have been staying in-house. So we can help and support them in that manner, but certainly, certainly not crossing the legal boundary. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. There can be rules. That's that's fine for the benefit of and, and the safety of the people, but not discriminatory rules, not not selfish rules. So definitely not ridiculous and bizarre rules uh, that some of the societies have actually designed. That uh, you, you you know, yeah, I know specifically of a case where conversations are happening that oh, because the domestic help goes uh, to multiple houses and that's dangerous, let's limit their entry to only one. Now, what happens in that case? They lose out on money. Are the others going to still pay them? Nobody wants to pay them if they're not coming to work. A survey that was done just a short while ago, and this is a story that was printed in Times of India on June 2nd, said 85% of the domestic workers claim their employers have not paid them for the lockdown period. 85% of the respondents said that. They were running out of food, essentials, not getting paid for the month of April, for the month of May. Now, that's not fair. I mean, none of our employees have stopped paying us just because there is a lockdown. Why should we be doing this? And especially not to people who cannot manage. Mr. B.S. Wara, let me come back to you and ask you this question. How should societies deal with this? Lockdown is being lifted gradually. Shops are opening. Soon malls will open. Travel has been allowed. Yet RWAs are making their own rules. Yeah, first of all, I would, I would like to add a few lines on the earlier uh, things shown by you. The maid walking on the stairs, that was unethical, unjustified. We can't, that was shocking. And then the family that was not allowed to enter their own home. I don't know, maybe some of the RWAs are trying to be over ambitious and trying to be dictatorial, but they must understand that we are for the service to the society, we are for the welfare of the public and not for any dictatorial practices. And secondly, the things are worsening so far as Delhi is concerned. The things are worsening here. Day by day cases are rising. The government has opened everything, maybe for the sake of revenue, but the fact is that the lives of the innocent persons are in danger now. There are no beds available, no facilities available, nothing. There are dozens of persons who are uh, on the doors of different hospitals and they are not getting admitted into the hospital. That's the condition of Delhi. Even yesterday at 9 p.m., I, I viewed a video that a person in the ambulance was standing outside uh, GB Pant Hospital and in the night he expired because the hospital never admitted him. Another case was there of Aman Preet. Her father was on the LML. RML hospital, but he could not get the admission and he also expired. So in Delhi, the condition is very bad. We must be over cautious. We must take precautions. The purpose is not to endanger any any services or any jobs of our maids or anyone. I just I will just request the RWS as well as Delhi government, please just ask, just allow us to test the maids, the plumbers, the electricians, as well as all the persons who are coming to the, uh, for serving maybe the vendors or anyone else, because our purpose is not to hurt the sentiments of anyone. Our purpose is just to take the security measures, that, uh, precautionary measures, so that no one is infected. Even if a maid or a plumber or an electrician is infected, he will go to his or her home and spoil their own family. And if he comes to our home, our family is spoiled. So we will just request that we must take care, we must take every precaution to save everyone because in Delhi, the situation is worsening, the mm -hmm. situation is very bad. And I am not talking about other areas, but in Delhi, the situation is very bad. Yes, well, uh, I know. Yeah, I agree with you. And people should be precautious. You cannot let their guard down. I agree with you on that also. But the rules and the regulations that we make have to also be rational. 
and have to be sensible and i and and like you really rightly said the video that i showed that kind of things those kind of rules should not be allowed uh, anil batra is calling us from mumbai uh, good evening mr batra go ahead please i'm calling from mumbai mulon uh, i am a mc member we are facing some problems is the testing protocols are changed every day for testing of covid and after that we also have some more issues uh, is about the domestic mates and other things whenever we want to go for testing uh, hospitals are not available beds are not available in our society we have given instructions to all the members to pay all the mates full salary for 3 months until and unless this uh, uh, pandemic is over but what is bmc supporting us we do not get any mm. we do not get any bed we do not get any facilities you are right um, the uh, like uh, you know our guest was also saying that delhi has a bit of a problem with healthcare infrastructure um, and so does mumbai Mumbai uh, has a problem with healthcare infrastructure, and we need more ICU beds, and more ventilators. We need more general ward beds because most of the hospitals are already full or don't want to take COVID patients. Uh, but again, I will reiterate the point, uh, Mr. Batra, that that doesn't mean that we start, uh, you know, behaving in a manner where we start, uh, you know, harassing people around us. Uh, calling on people uh, and there have been so many instances in mumbai you see somebody going in and out they may be part of an essential service they may be a doctor a policeman uh, a nurse uh, they may be an, a, a delivery a, a delivery person a shopkeeper who can run his essential shop they may be in the field of media but society members have called on police and civic authorities and send them to these houses to say what's going on and to for all of those people i would say stay in your own homes who's asking you to step out but don't harass your own neighbors don't turn on each other in these tough times we have to all stand together mr ramesh prabhu like you said there aren't any guidelines that have come from the government so you're all going to sit together and design some guidelines which way will maharashtra go yeah see uh, as far as we are concerned we have written to the government as i said to give a guideline they have got a guideline for the purpose of air travel they have got a guideline for bus travel they have got a guideline for all the type of activities even to open the shop they are saying on the one day one one side the uh, on the other side another side all these guidelines are given why they cannot give a guideline a simple guideline for a housing society or a rw that they cannot stop the maid servants because of the government's laziness of not giving this guideline of how a maid servant should be allowed they are saying technician can be allowed uh, repairing person can be allowed or uh, other people can be allowed even to the extent of delivering a newspaper is allowed now if these things are allowed if they add one more word yes. that maid servants also should be allowed i think uh, the thing would have been lost but i don't know what stops them and when we checked up with the is officers and the people collectors everybody they are saying we are waiting for the government to come out we don't want to issue any guideline and when we pressurize something they are saying let the society take and when you give this type of authority to a housing society you can understand they put their own rules and regulations because they are thinking tomorrow if something happens to their building a covid case comes the chairman and secretary will be put behind the bar and they are thinking that they will be made a scapegoat and therefore they don't want to be scapegoat and therefore this type of dictatorial practices have happened in mumbai and therefore i am saying the government even on this platform i am saying let the government wake up let the cm wake up let the collector wake up why they are not waking up how many voices we have to make we have made number of reminders now there is a pmc pune municipal corporation on 19th of may 2020 they have come out with a guideline that let the housing society allow only thing they should use the necessary precaution why government of maharashtra cannot come out of this guideline i am fail to understand and they are allowing the housing society mm. to do this type of dictatorial activities and therefore with this uh, through your medium i want to tell the government of maharashtra to wake up collector to wake up is officers to wake up and allow a guideline and give a one liner that yes 
they have done various amendments why not they come out with the amendment the housing society should allow the uh, you know maid servants or the house boys or the you know drivers with the necessary precaution this is a simple demand we are doing and if they don't give and therefore we have called a meeting tomorrow we will come out with our guideline in our guideline it will be very very simple guideline saying that there okay. will be uh, hand sanitizer kept in the entrance of the gate uh you know uh, fever will be checked Correct. beyond that nothing else will be done Correct. You know, for example, and I don't understand the idea behind this. Uh, there, is, there, there are many societies, and this is in many cities that I have spoken to people who live in different societies. They say we've asked for a COVID uh, test certificate, a COVID-free certificate uh, from the houser. Now, once they show the COVID-free certificate, they can use the hand sanitizer and enter and work. I don't know if the people in uh, sitting in these RWS realize. that the covid free certificate may be for today but anybody can catch an infection including the rwa members the their their, their house help driver guard the vendor shopkeeper banker any airline member anybody can catch it tomorrow and that covid free certificate is not going to be of any use then so you may ask for it today make them run around struggle with it because it's not so easy to even get your testing done especially if you're not showing any symptoms you have to shell out and uh, some money for that and that certificate after 2 days is of no use then what will the rws do ask start asking for certificates on a daily basis mr k k rai one more time because this is a question viewers are still asking me what are the kind of rights that these associations have and what are the rights that people living in these apartments have over the rwa see the the associations have rights to agitate their concerns they have no right to enforce certain things for enforcement there has to be legal sanction which the rws don't have that they must understand and secondly my learned friend was talking about what is to be allowed what is not to be allowed normally the restrictions are given in the negative list that these are the restrictions which are imposed if those restrictions are not there rest of the things should be allowed meaning thereby if the guidelines of the government say that uh, that that these people should not enter then rest of the people who whose uh, name or whose designations don't figure they should be allowed they, there should not be insistence upon a specific direction being given that these are the persons who have to be allowed so if you once you have the negative list of these are the these are the activities which can't be permitted so those are the activities they have to be avoided rest of the activities have to be allowed because there is no restriction on that so the very understanding is defective you are looking for permission to allow certain things that is not there you you should look for what are the restrictions and you should see what those restrictions are followed and rest of the things are allowed so that is the primary thing which has to be seen secondly like uh, there have been instances of fines being imposed the rws don't have right to impose fines because even for imposing fines there have to be legal sanctions which they don't have so they must have awareness of their limitations a b they should also be aware they have to take the society along they have to take the maximum members together there has to be consensus of certain issues their role is very pivotal no doubt right but at the same time they don't have that that is such to be backing for what they have been doing so once they are, they know their limitations and once they right. consensus of right. the other requirement of the society things would improve i suppose and when we are dealing with the people who are in for us we must have respect for them what did we do when we fought our independence we blame the britishers for segregation and now we are doing the same thing to our own people we do we have any justification for inhuman treatment meeting out to those people we don't have i mean apart from law absolutely I well the no disease is actually going to see allowed. where you are coming from who you are what your class is what your caste is unfortunately it's the humans that do all of this uh, i'm going to thank all of our panelists for joining us and sharing their views and i think this needs to be a message to people living in those societies with bizarre rwa rules
you can sing all the patriotic songs you want standing in your balcony but if you are not going to show respect and support to those around you those who actually help you lead a comfortable life then there is no point in pretending to be patriotic let's be a good human being first let's understand that the rwa and its rules and regulations is for our benefit not to harass each other not to target each other not to segregate workers from those living there not to segregate tenants from those who are living there i mean whatever gets into people when they start targeting healthcare workers asking them where are you coming from where is your covid cert certificate how do you know that the last time you went out to buy your daily uh, round of milk and bread you didn't get the infection think about that before you start imposing restrictions and making lives of other people hell thank you so much viewers for joining us on this conversation welcome back viewers as you know with my much fanfare the delhi government launched their corona app and they promised that this is how you will be able to track availability of beds availability of icu beds so you don't have to go from one place to the other uh, in case you or your family member gets infected with coronavirus we decided to do a check and what we found was that there was a data mismatch while the app was telling us that in many places beds were available when we called up these hospitals they said there are no beds take a look koi ventilator bill hai kya covid ke liye abhi nahi hai jo app hai delhi government ki usme char bed woh mention hai woh koi bhi available nahi hai mam nahi ye aapke yahan ventilator bed hai kya sir covid ke liye ventilator nahi hai sir हाँ कोई बेड अवेलेबल है क्या वेंटिलेटर कोविड के लिए नहीं 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 अभी नहीं है मैम एक्चुअली जो ऐप है दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट की उसमें कह रहे हैं कि आपके हॉस्पिटल हैं आप लेकिन हमारा यहाँ पे अभी प्रिपरेशन चल रही है उस चीज के लिए अभी कंप्लीट नहीं हुई है ओके तो आपके यहाँ जो चार बेड वहाँ मैं वो कोई भी अवेलेबल नहीं है मैम नहीं ओके ओके मैम हेलो मैम आई वॉन्टेड टू नो इफ देर इज बेड अवेलेबल फॉर कोविड डेडिकेटेड ventilator right now because uh, the app is showing it has uh, three beds i want to no right now there is no bed for covid also ma'am on the application it is showing that you have the hospital has three empty beds no no there is no bed according to this number सर मैं आयुष्मान बात कर रहा हूं मुझे ये जानना है कि आपके यहां वेंटिलेटर बेड है क्या सर कोविड के लिए नहीं सर अवेलेबल नहीं है सर अभी सर एप्लीकेशन पे तो आठ बेड अवेलेबल दिखा रहा है आपके एक भी नहीं सर वो सिस्टम कुछ और है सरकार क्या कहती है सिस्टम कुछ और दिखाता है आर एल के सी में सर यहाँ पे दिखा रहा है आर एल सर वो दिखा रहा है लेकिन मैं हकीकत तो मैं जानता हूँ ना सर okay. मुझे पता है इस के बारे में कोई बेड नहीं है सर आपके पास नहीं सर वेंटिलेटर में वेंटिलेटर नहीं है सर ओके वेंटिलेटर है नहीं आपके पास नहीं बेड नहीं है सर अभी इसके लिए ओके थैंक यू सर Well, in fact, the Delhi government has now responded to Imran Nau's investigation, and in, the government seems to be putting the onus on the hospitals, saying that the hospitals are actually misrepresenting the data when the patients are calling our viewers. This was what we also told you could be one of the possibilities that either the app isn't working, and there is some communication gap between the hospital and the government data, a nodal officer collecting the data, or. the hospitals aren't giving the true picture to the patients and turning them away for whatever reason ayushman is actually the one who did this investigation for us ayushman take us through the details well tanvi the delhi government has replied to our investigation in that they have clearly said that uh, somewhere in last 3 uh, uh, days uh, more than 1000 patients have been admitted to several hospitals and this would not have been pa- possible had the uh, coordination between app and hospital would not have been there clearly they are saying that uh, definitely there is a problem uh, prevailing at the hospital side they have said that either they are not updating the data properly or uh, even after updating the data they are misrepresenting the facts to the actual callers who are calling there for bed so this is the difference that has come from the delhi government we clearly know and we that these are the nodal officers who have been appointed by the uh, hospital to update the delhi government and then that they into the system where the corona app displays the number what we found is that whenever the number was displaying and we were calling those hospitals the ventilator beds were not ventilators were not present and even the bed 
capacity was somewhere uh, uh, the numbers were uh, mismatching uh, on uh, from the hospital tanvi All right, Ayushman. Thanks so much for bringing us that investigation. Well, now that the Delhi government has taken a note of it, we hope that they resolve this problem. Otherwise, this app is not going to be of any help if it tells us that there is a bed available. But as a patient, the hospital doesn't give us that bed. Well, before we wrap up this show, here is something interesting for you. Times Evoke is a unique print and digital initiative that inspires a new awareness, one that creates a joyful harmony with nature and all of its forms. To celebrate the bond that humanity shares with nature, Times Evoke is bringing together 25 leading artists for India's biggest concert for the environment live with Grammy winner Ricky Cage. This is happening on Saturday, 13th of June at 8 p.m. And for more information, viewers, you can log on to www.timesevokeconcert.com.